This morning I woke up, it was about 20 to 6. And once again, I knew there was no use trying to get back to sleep because I was just too wide awake. So, got up, did the usual things. Yeah, I, uh, plugged in the coffee pot. That was the most important thing. Well, the second most important thing. Anyway, yeah, I did the usual things, like I checked my email, and I checked uh, the weather, and then I checked uh, the Google News, then the Facebook, and lastly, the YouTube comments. And, uh, yeah, oh, by the way, when I was looking in my surveillance monitor, I saw a little rabbit. So it reminded me, oh, yeah, I better put out a cup full of carrots, which I did. And it's this little rabbit that, that I saw out there kind of worried me because it was not exhibiting the fear of me that it should. And as I was putting the uh, carrots out, it actually hopped right over, and it was only maybe a, oh, a couple of feet from my feet. Now... Yeah, that, that bothers me because if it shows no fear, it's susceptible to, you know, yeah, harm. Or it could also mean it's uh, sick, and you don't want to get bit by a sick rabbit. Now, don't go worrying. This is not going to be another rabbit episode. Anyway, when I'm checking out my comments here, there was a couple that sort of indicated, hey, where's the hood? And one of the guys actually uh, provided a link to a place here in Canada that I'd never heard of before. So I checked them out. Sure enough, they've got it. And <laughs> they've got it cheaper. Now, I've already ordered it from Cellar Dweller, so, uh, you know, I sort of feel obligated. I don't do that sort of thing. You know, I don't, uh, uh, you know, uh, you know, um, you know, screw them around, in other words. A lot has happened in the last three hours. First of all, I uh, took out the time to check out this modelkits.ca. And the reason I did that is because I was very puzzled as to why their store was in Ontario, but the model would come from British Columbia, you know, like two, three thousand miles apart. And I've concluded that modelkits.ca, even though they do have a, a, a model store in uh, Aurelia, Ontario, they deal more with die-cast cars and stuff like that. And I think they're just sort of doing this on the side, on sort of a, you know, an online business. And if you order something from them, they have their supplier ship it from uh, around Vancouver. Probably the same place where a Cellar Dweller gets theirs. And uh, now speaking of Cellar Dweller, here's an interesting story. I went to Johnson Plastics this morning, as you can see by the roof of my car. And I got the uh, plexiglass. Well, they don't call it plexiglass. They call it something else, which is supposed to be, well, like bulletproof, only of course it isn't. But he said, you can hit this with a hammer and it won't break. Well, I don't think we're going to try it, but anyway. So on the way back from Johnson Plastics, I had to drive right past Cellar Dweller. In fact, uh, there was a parking spot right in front of the store. I didn't have to cross the street or anything. Just zipped right in and stopped in and talked to Carrie. And Carrie said, you must be psychic. Or he said something to that effect. Because uh, he had just received an email from his supplier. The uh, hood the, is at the, had his su supplier in uh, Edmonton. And it's going to be shipped probably tomorrow morning. I'm thinking that in all likelihood we're going to be getting a call from Cellar Dweller on Friday. Yeah. Anyway, that's good news. Uh, oh yeah, back to this uh, modelkits.ca. I'm really leery about ordering from an outfit like that, even though it'd be a little cheaper. Uh, because, um, well, uh, you know, if they're in, if they're in one place and they're it's coming from another place. Uh, I don't know, they're sort of like a middleman. I don't want to pay the middleman, although I imagine Cellar Dweller is sort of a middleman, but uh, I'd sooner give it to local business. So hopefully, all being well, we're going to be getting a call from Cellar Dweller, I'm guessing Friday. Anyway, now about this acrylic. Is it going to fit? Well, it better fit. I took my tape measure along and measured it before I put it on the roof. Okay, I think we're probably going to have to slide our Bismarck in as far as it will go. I'll make sure I'm not going to be breaking any little gangways or ladders off the other side there. About there. It's, the reason being is when we put the plexiglass up 
uh, it's going to almost catch Tony's plane here, so I'm going to want to be careful and watch that. Okay, um, I guess it doesn't matter which side I put in. Let's see which way it goes. We'll take a look at it and uh, reposition the camera. Now I remember one time I had some old plexiglass and this stuff here was really hard to get off. I don't think there's any reason why I should have to clean this. It should be, you might say, pristine. Oh my, I can feel the static electricity. That's going to be catching dust something fierce. Maybe I should be wiping it down with a wet cloth. Um, trying to, I don't want to get fingerprints on the inside. just had a terrible thought. Did I remember to press record? Yep. Okay. Wouldn't be the first time I did that. Uh. Okay. Now watch Tony's plane. I suppose uh, it'll be fairly easy to clean this. And this one's not coming off quite as easy. Okay, now watch the airplane. can't see it, but there's a little hair right here on the inside. All right, now this is the plan. I should be able to use my suction cups to lift it up. I don't see any reason why this won't work. I don't think the, uh, the, the suction cups are going to hurt the plexiglass. Okay, I'll uh, reposition the camera, although maybe that's, maybe I don't need to. Let's see what's going to happen here. Cut it straight at Johnson Plastics. The top is good. No, it is sorry. Now what I'm going to have to do is, you know, have something right along the bottom here that can just be quickly removed, or easily removed, but not by a kid. So I guess probably it would, it'll involve a screw, just to hold it in. And uh, we'll clean that up after. In the meantime, i got to sit down and rest my back.
Okay. When I take this back off, which will be in a few minutes, uh, I'll have to uh, wipe it down on the inside with a wet rag or da a damp rag, a mi microfiber cloth type thing so that it won't streak. Uh, because the static electricity did attract any kind of dust or whatever that was just laying, laying there. And uh, anyway, that's not, that's not a problem. Uh, there is a slight problem. How many of you remember in the comments from about, oh, maybe two weeks ago, somebody said that when I'm sitting over there at the model table and I'm looking this way, the reflection from the window is going to, you know, bounce off of this. And it, it kind of does. It's not real bad. Uh, it's not as bad as I thought it was going to be. Uh, we'll take a couple of shots uh, tomorrow once I... Uh, oh, and another thing, speaking of comments, how come none of you quickly commented and said, you left the tape measure in there? Okay. And you know, what the funny part is, uh, I was even pointing at that corner where it was, when it was kind of binding a little bit, and, and I still didn't see it. Well, I saw it when I was editing, yeah kind of late right but it's got to come off again anyway and it's it's easy to take take off so um, I'll be doing that sometime probably tomorrow anyway it's uh, it's getting on this afternoon so uh, I got to cut this video off thanks for watching and all being well we'll see you tomorrow oh one more thing uh, the uh, Tony, Tony's airplane is probably about uh, oh an inch or a little better than an inch from the edge of the glass. Um, so uh, I have to remember when I take the glass, the plexiglass off to turn the plane around so it's facing forward. That that'll look better, and maybe move it out just a little bit uh, so it's not rubbing against the uh, hull of the ship. Okay, now we'll see you tomorrow. <laughs>